I'm going to show you a little video first of what we're doing. A bit of luck. So this is a montage. You can see it's a physical radio device made of a Raspberry Pi with little speakers. It's a radio-like device, so it's not an actual radio. So I'm going to talk a bit about like, why we did it, why we thought it was a good idea, and um, what we're going to do next. So why radio? Well, we work for BBC R&D. Um, the BBC does a lot of radio. Uh, we've got 10 national channels, something like 40 regional ones, plus the World Service. Uh, so 48 million, million people listen to the radio every week. That's sort of 90% of the audience. And as a group within R&D, we do a lot of experiments with radio. So here's one called Breaking Out. And this was uh, a sort of... It detected where you were in the country and then started making um, custom additions to your... Uh, to a, a piece of content, a radio play, um, based on the weather in Bristol or wherever it was you were. So you played it on your computer and it started putting in rain sound effects, for example. Um, this is the World Service Radio Archive. So we've got thousands and thousands of video and we're crowdsourcing the metadata for it. But again, it only runs on your computer at the moment. And whenever we talk about this stuff to people and show it to them, they say... Could we have it on a physical radio, please? Because that's how we listen to the radio. So we're like, OK, we're web people, but we can do this. We'd like to look at hardware. We want to make a radio. We want to make a radio that's completely customizable, that we can do whatever we want on. <laughs> so you may have heard of The Archers. It's a very, very long-running soap on Radio 4. It's on every day apart from Saturdays. A lot of people find it very annoying. A lot of people love it. I find it very annoying, and my partner doesn't hear it. So this is the vision we started with. So you hear the hideous music, you click the panic button, and you get something else. doesn't matter what. And you don't have to listen to it. OK, so a hardware hack day at work. Here's our initial view. I don't know if you can see properly. That's a farmer that gradually rises out of the box, and then you <laughs> bash it down again to... That one was a bit hard for an initial one, so... Uh, OK, here's the one we actually made on that day. It's got a Raspberry Pi attached to a little speaker. It's got a nice big red button that lights up, uh, and you just press that, and it changes channel. And then... Uh, I found a friend in Bristol who could do laser cutting, and we laser cut this beautiful cardboard box. Again, the video's not working, but I'll show you. So this is, this is the sound bit. Back to just now, and can Caroline leave Grey Gables behind? It must be the archers. Keep it locked. BBC Radio 1 Extra. Showtime now. now. Okay. So the reason I've been putting postcards on uh, rather optimistically on all the chairs here is um, because when we started to talk about this, and a big part of this was in the Bristol hack space and talking to Richard and the people there, is when you start to talk to people about radio, they immediately start to go, okay, yeah, 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 the way I'd do it is I'd add another button that dispenses bacon or something like that that is an actual one anyway so I drew a rough very rough and ready people don't like being faced with, with a blank screen so I drew a very rough and ready square thing that looks a little bit like a radio we had some cheap cards printed from Moo and um, and some nice stickers as well so the idea is you can take a postcard put some stickers on in appropriate places so there's knobs and dials and speakers and things like that and then use that as the basis for your radio. So I tried this out about a year ago at an XML uh, summer school and we got some great ones. So this one is Matt Patterson. He loves Melvin Bragg. He listens to Radio 4 so he wants, uh, whenever something interesting is on the radio, he wants to, it to, you click the button and it plays an in our time that is somehow relevant to whatever it was that just happened. This is a great one from my friend Paul. <laughs> uh, 
So <laughs> it's a Humphreys rater. Anyway, um, so you give it a gentle stroke and that feeds back to John Humphreys about how, how lovely when he's being nice. And then when he talks about science, it gives him an electric shock. Probably won't do that one. But the feedback to the presenter is an interesting idea. Here's one from my colleague, Sean. So this is kind of quite similar to an archer's avoider, but a bit more general. So you can have more of the thing that's happening or less of it. So you can avoid it completely, and it learns eventually what it is that you like and you, don't, and you dis dislike. So you can avoid lots of different things with it. So now we've got about 120 of these things. And some of them, they mean a lot to the people who've done them, but we don't know which ones to pursue. Um, and... We don't know which ones will work for other people. But the idea is that if we make these things, then we can turn them into... Uh, if we turn them into real things, then we can test if they're useful for multiple people. So that's what we did. So my colleagues, Dan and Andrew, worked on this and did most of the coding. Um, so this is their magic button radio. Sorry. So the idea is that it's just enough of a radio so that you can do it. Actually, I've got some here. I'll show you. of a radio so that you can it's got a volume dial you can turn it on and off you can cycle through your channels and uh, it also has a magic button it also runs on it a web interface so all the complexity that you need to do custom interfaces is on the web server that's running on the um, on the device itself so you can hear, see here that the physical device and the web server are connected up so if you change a button that's reflected in the web interface so it kind of has to be this way because if you're going to it has to be this way because if you're going to put any kind of complexity in a radio you don't want to have to put a load of buttons on that people don't really understand but it's straightforward to add more functionality to a web page so here's one Sorry about these small technical problems. Okay, so you can see here that it's got three functionalities for the magic button. In fact, this is a mock-up and it only has two. So for a first start, when you press the button, you can either set it so it can avoid, so you can avoid whatever you want. And we've got the metadata, so if you press it, it knows when the archers is finished or whatever it is that you've avoided, and then it can restart again. And you can also avoid specific tunes, for example, that you don't like. Um, the other one is speak. So we're very interested in accessibility. This seems like a really interesting opportunity to try and do something with it. Um, the initial thing is you can set it so that when you press the button, it tells you what's playing at the moment. Uh, it was supposed to tweet, but it doesn't. So underlying it, um, we've basically got uh, RabbitMQ running, so an event bus, um, so, that, um, so that changes in the physical interface are reflected in the web, interface and vice versa and you can have multiple you can access the web interface from multiple different devices and so on so here's the hardware we got uh, a very good product designer called Victor Johansson to design the physical device for us we wanted something extensible so we can make it different thicknesses we wanted something with minimal gluing um, and it didn't need much expertise to put together, so this is what it looks like. Here are the pieces, or well, most of them. And you can make it out of lots of different materials. So the initial one was made out of MDF with some plastic corner pieces, all laser cut. Uh, we've been experimenting various different kind of acrylic cases and things like that. Um, I really like the cardboard ones, they seem to work pretty well. This, so you don't need a laser cutter. With this one here, um, I have cut it out of some pieces of paper, and you can sort of see what it looks like. This is one that just plays the arches rather than the reverse. And everything packs neatly inside-ish. Um, 
as you can see there. So the pieces are, so the, the important thing about it is that it needs to be on the web. So it's not a real radio, it streams internet streams, because that's the only way that we can make it configurable. So it appears to be a radio device that plays radio, but it does need to be on the web, it isn't a proper radio. So quite a lot of the time we spent just making sure it could get on the network effectively, which turns out to be a pretty difficult problem. You can see inside it's got a um, couple of rotary encoders, speaker, Wi-Fi. It's a Raspberry Pi with a card. We've used off-the-shelf hardware where we can to make it easy for us to um, for us to make them ourselves, for people in the BBC to make their own, and then hopefully other people too if it catches people's attention. So I've got a video for the Wi-Fi configuration. Sorry, can anyone help me? Here we go. Okay, so if it doesn't, if it doesn't find a Wi-Fi network that it knows about, it broadcasts one. This is quite a common pattern, so Chromecast does it as well. It broadcasts one. Um, you tell it your Wi-Fi details. You reboot it, and off you go. And unless you've made a typo, it will then boot up into it. I'm out of control. Help me. There we go. Right. So now we've got the building blocks here. So we've got Wi-Fi configuration to get it on there. We've got an audio server which talks to MPD. We've got the physical UI server that enables you to configure buttons and dials and things to do what you want. We've got the prototype app, which was the magic button thing that we showed you, so that's just one thing you could build, but it's a, an example of it. And we've got a client library, which just interfaces between, so kind of uh, uses the send things to RabbitMQ and back again. And we've got a modular case, and it's all open source, um, and including the case designs and everything like that. And we're working in the open from the beginning. So it's now in sufficient state such that a bodger like me can add in EMFM into there because it's just an internet stream and we can listen to it on the radio. One of the next projects that we want to make is um, a version of the World Service Archive where you can pick what year you want to listen to and then just set it off going, but in a physical case. So the idea of all this was to make it so that people, so that we could try out all the radios that people had made. But in practice, actually doing it takes quite a long time. Even with the tested software, with the um, open source case and everything, it just takes quite a long time to actually get one to work. So recently we've been thinking a lot about shortcuts. So can we take away some of these ideas and decide that they're rubbish ideas or that they're not suitable for taking further before we actually have to make a case? So for a long time in the kinds of projects that I do, it's a requirement to have a scenario, so to think about the kinds of ways which people might use your technology. So here's one from an EU project that we did uh, a while back. And here the idea is that Jana's listening to the radio, there's something really interesting on, there's visual material that she can, that can, that's synchronised with the, with the programme, so she can use another device and just see... Um, more information about it that enhances her experience of the content. So the problem there, though, is that these scenarios don't test it against what people would actually do. What they do is express your desire that people use the technology in this particular way. So in this case, we were working on a synchronization technology. We thought it was a great idea. Here's an example of why you might use it. But actually... Maybe you wouldn't. Maybe you're just doing something else when you're listening to the radio and you don't really want to get out of your phone. and look at, Or you could just use Google or something like that to find out more information. So writing down scenarios like this aren't really that useful for testing ideas. So this is some of the team that I work in. I don't know if you can see it. It's a bunch of people sat around a table with a lot of pretend devices made out of cardboard. Uh, with little messages on pieces of paper saying what they're doing. 
And what we, what we were trying to test here is um, whether what the sort of user experience would be to send audio between different devices and what each device would say as soon as you did it. And what we found was that if you act something out, uh, people... You get a sense of what the problems are, you get a sense of the holes, and it's actually a really cheap way of doing it. So we used bits of cardboard, we thought about the messages that were going past. It was a lot of fun, but there was a very serious point behind it, which is to not have to make all this stuff before you realise it's not going to work. So, recently, um, Richard and I have been thinking about whether we can kill ideas more quickly than that. So without all the making things out of paper and everything like that. So, so this is a little bit experimental and it is um, early days. But these are cat wigs. So the idea here is you have a set of cards and they're a little bit like tarot and you test your idea against them. So for example, this one is, does your idea solve a problem? Is it as good as antibiotics? Probably not. Is it as good as a garage door opener? So it helps people a little bit, helps a few people a little bit. A lot of technology ideas are like this. A lot of apps are like this. It maybe helps just a tiny, tiny bit. Or is it just a cat wig? A cat wig is something that nobody needs and nobody wants. Also, it's just a great name. So here's a few of the examples we've got. We've been thinking about. So does it make everything better in the world? Does it help things? Or does it not change anything? Is it entertaining? If you're trying to make something that's fun, would people actually enjoy doing it? Or would it actually be a bit rubbish? So is it as rubbish as a tax return? As entertaining as a sitcom? Or really exciting like fireworks? Uh, attention seeking. So a lot of apps and similar things are very irritating. So this is a kind of a test. Is it, is it as annoying as an alarm clock? Or, or a phone call? Or is it just kind of an ambient amount of attention? And would you use it again? So the, the three here are berry and meal, train station sandwich. You'd have it if you have to, but you wouldn't really voluntarily return to it. Or booze and six. Basically, it's highly addictive. So we've got a few of these. And what it does is it initiates a conversation about your idea. So you start to go, actually, this is supposed to be a social application, but in fact, it wouldn't happen like that. Or this is supposed to be... Uh, let's see what's that one so this is supposed to be something that really changes the world but actually it's only going to help like five people so you start to say what, you start to see what the, what's wrong with the, with the ideas so okay I'm going to finish up soon um, I've shown this to my colleague Andrew and he said he said this rather long thing here but it, basically he was saying part of the process of making these things is you find out a lot from actually doing them, right? Uh, so you get these happy accidents, you talk to different people, you, you see it in various stages of construction, people comment on it, and then you just learn a lot. Um, so he's worried that we might accidentally kill off an idea that could be really good in the future um, using a cat wig. Oops. Um, so it's possible, but you do have to decide what you're going to work on. So it's quite important to be able to use the resources that you have effectively and um, this is, we think this is one way of doing it so hmm? so I'm a little early which means that we can do some we can make some radio postcards but before I do that I just want to say thank you to the open source community to my colleagues and to tell you to have a little look at our website and see if there's anything that interests you there um, and you can also ask me any questions if you like. Any questions? to radiodan.net the last blog post explains how to do how to it's got the all the links you need to make it so it's a little bit experimental at, the t at this point but you can also email me if you get stuck so there's an image there there's the case designs for laser cutting 
and it should just work out of the box if you make the box. Any more? Hi. open-ended, uh, not the back-end framework specifically. No, they, it's Node.js, it's starting off with Ruby, it's Node.js, it's, it's just custom code. It's a little bit overcomplicated at the moment, but it should be configurable at some point. Anything else? Do, do. Um, this is all uh, love. I think I do a lot of radio for this podcast. Right. Yeah, so because we're using MPD as a back end, it's very straightforward to just download things in the background. So one of the things we wanted to do, for example, was make it so that you could favorite your stuff on Twitter or have it email it to it or something like that, and it can download them in the background for you. So yes, it's very straightforward to get it to do that. Offline listening, so offline listening is really interesting in that sense. Because there's a, there's a sense where, let's say you're avoiding the arches, you kind of want to slot something in that's the right length that it thinks you will like. And it has information about what you listen to, so it could be that for you. Yeah. Would it um, feed back any information? Is like uh, ratings information, is that part of what you're interested in? Anyone else? Um, I was wondering whether you are looking at evolving the design. Because you've looked at integrating um, the web app. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking, this, isn't there a lady named uh, Shield? Because you might be able to kind of customise the radio interface. I think that'd be really interesting. But previously, when we used we used radios with touch screens, they're actually really they're really hard to use, and you basically have to you have to design a custom interface to the to the screen. So it's, it's really quite a hard thing to do. For how people speaking okay. and it's unfamiliar. So you but yes, cat, I <laughs> Mentally cat <laughs> if, if I get the word catwig into the vocabulary of you guys because of this talk, I think that'll be, you know, a real some impact. <laughs> Anything else? Anyone else? Do Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.